soul live love and greetings from my heart to yours. I'm Rain Ma. This is a Soul Journer's Truth podcast. I come to you humbly, not to tell you what to do on your journey. I am here simply to share some of what I've learned on my own soul journey. I'm returning to my roots as a storyteller. I speak to, for, and from the one that I am. Welcome home. Dungay, Dungadam, Dungadi, Dumbedamba, Dumbade. Dumbadi, dumbade, dumbi, dumbi. <clears throat> I'm just seeing if I have any voice left to speak and do this update. <laughs> um, the last update, professional and personal update that I that I did was over two years ago on the solstice. And I recently listened to it, and it still applies. It still is pretty accurate, but there's some things that um, I've wanted to, to share and also kind of speak a little bit more to the collective because I definitely will not answer all of the emails and questions in some of those ways because there's literally not enough time (laughs) Um, and desire for me to do that. So I am a goddess that speaks and moves at the speed of life and it's easier for me to speak. So first of all, um, I had some pretty big birth, death, rebirth, transitions, and anniversaries. Um, We'll start with really 2023. Um, It was hugely spent in my role play as a guardian of the gate and walking with my father who was in his end of life transition. So I put my midwife slash hospice nurse um, hat on and it was a long, it was a long time coming, but also really a sweet and beautiful, beautiful, beautiful victory in his transition. He had a home death, which is exactly what he wanted. Um, And for him and I, I was absolutely growing up a daddy's girl. And for people that know me, I have, um, I have many parents. Yeah, many mamas, many papas. I have my biological parents and I have my adoptive parents. I have my spirit parents. And then there's, you know, ones that are sprinkled all over the globe that have definitely walked with me in many different spaces. But it was my father that raised me. So my adoptive father. And for me, it truly was an honor to hold that space for him. Um, and because it is one of my gifts to walk with, with ones who are in life transitions in different realms, obviously birth, um, that has played itself out and continues to be um, a role that I show up in. But death, I have also been called to death. I've you know walked with um, my sister who crossed over a few years ago, um, well, more than a few years. Uh, but my my dance with my father in that way was pretty sacred in the sense of yeah there's a lot there's a there's a whole there's a whole podcast that i've recorded regarding um from the perspective as his daughter as well as a um as a womb shaman 
the the rites of passage and um, things that happen in mystical realms and yeah there there's a there there's a couple of them I recorded a lot in 2023 uh, which was really nice there was a lot of coming back to um, the place that I was born and raised um, there was a sweetness to it in the sense of being able to witness myself being able to see how much I have grown um, and it wasn't difficult in the sense of even the dance, say, with my, with my mom and my dad. And there was Alzheimer's, dementia, lots of body. His body was failing for a long time. So for even the ones that are like, oh, I'm so sorry. It's like, no, it is fantastic. He is. And again, because I am a mystic, womb shaman, midwife, all the things, I've already had clear communication in and after his transition. So for ones that know as well. Um, spirit is eternal. Yeah. If you're not in your physical body and meat suit, you literally just change <laughs> frequencies. So it's all good. And it really is beautiful. And for ones, if you can, yeah, that's where if you can have a home birth, a home death, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, so it's all good. Um, but I would say in the sense of my own reflections that, that that is something that I was able to witness myself in in wholeness. It wasn't stressful. Even prior to coming back to the United States, I flew from Europe. Um, and I was really, really, I entered into that space really balanced, really healthy. Before I left, I was going to the thermal springs, hot springs, sauna, um, receiving body work, um, doing all kinds of things in the sense of preparing. So I also knew that that was a role that I was going to play. I did not know that he would take as long as he would take to leave his body. But at the same time, we kind of laugh about it now because... Um, you know, he kind of got a little bit of a second wind when my energy came <laughs> um, in in the ways. And in, in all honesty, I even had a friend who came by and he's like, he really, he looks like he's the happiest I've ever seen him. So for that to have been his reality, um, I, it was a gift. Yeah. And he was somebody that in many ways, uh, the space that he held for me growing up in his being, um, there's so many gifts in that. So to me, again, it was an honor. So for the ones that have sent messages and condolences and all of that, I thank you. Um, and I receive with, with love. And at the same time, it is a beautiful, beautiful blessing. Um, my wish for absolutely every single person on you know, earth side is to be able to live healthy and happily as long as you can. And when that's no longer an option, I wish you the speed to be able to leave your physical meat suit as quickly and easily as possible. Yeah. So there's that. Um, for myself, um, a lot of the things that I got to spend my time in the midst of, of caretaking and things like that. I was home. I was cooking, even with clients, even the ones that I get to work with in those ways. Even actually when I, right immediately when I came back, I was working a lot and seeing a lot of clients because I was also really excited to be in the same time zone. Um, because that, you know, and I think again, I was really, really grounded, whole, healthy and balanced. So I did add and I was working a lot more. And then towards the end, as we got closer to his active dying, um, I stepped, um, I stepped that back in a, a really easy transition and gave myself the space. So I mean, I'm, I'm one that knows my, my limits and boundaries with what I'm able to do and how I'm able to show up and be of service without draining myself. But I will say one of the gifts of being back in the United States, I was so excited, um, you know, to, to be able to get my, there's certain spices and, um, 
things that I wasn't able to find when I was in, well, Germany particularly. Um, but just the, 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 the peace and being able to go and literally take boxes, open boxes from, go through my things and literally like unpack in ways. And literally, even now as I'm speaking and I'm, sh- I, I have all of my art and my caftans. And as I reflect on the past 20 years, it's been 20 years since I sold my condo and closed my practice and went on the a soldier's truth you know my soul live vision quest and to be able to see it 20 years later and to see and witness myself as well i am in absolute gratitude and awe um and it's been so much fun cuz again i do you know, as far as home and art and all of the things that I do have, um, I absolutely love. And I have been home. um, And I it was probably 2017 when I literally retired from the traveling priestess, um, you know, that aspect and world schooling with my son, um, who he is also absolutely fantastic. He's 19. Um, I have a a podcast that I recorded that is uh, entitled Son of a Womb Shaman and just some of my favorite memories from our sojourn and dance. But I will say even now in these moments, he lives in Texas, so we're not in the same in the same state. And there's a lot of things, like I said, for 2023 that were overshadowed, a lot of reunions and things that did not happen. Um, But I still think everything plays exactly as it's meant to. But I will say, even as far as Masihi's concerned, or for the ones that know him as Blessing, um, I love our dance. I love the evolution of our dance. I love um, getting to know him in his soul growth and evolution. I love the conversations. And even, there's even a piece too. We spent about eight hours on the phone um, two days before my dad passed. So we knew it was going to be soon, yeah? Um, But even the space, when I look back and I look 20 years of how he rolled with me through many different lands, many countries, many different things and as as a womb shaman as the way that I move and practice he was present for a lot of it and so for him to also have an up close and personal view of his grandfather um, in death and seeing the beauty the normalcy to see you know me administering morphine and the beauty the music that it's that it's something that i believe personally every it shouldn't be closeted you know it should not be something that people are not aware of the body knows what to do and knows how to die and i think it is an amazing rite of passage but i will say that that was also a really beautiful moment that i got to share with him in real time. Um, And again, him being my son, there are things that are just a part of his realm that maybe others don't really have access to. But, um, and I think even the next day when he went to one of his classes, they had um, a discussion about, about death and literally his experience in life and death is pretty profound at such a young age and I'm really proud (laughs) I'm really proud I really okay so for an update in general I would say that I really really love this season this time in my life Um, as much as I can reflect and um, you know especially Let's say, okay, February 13th, 2000, um, yeah, February 13th, 2004 was when I was initiated as a priestess. That was um, a really big landmark for me personally. And for ones that, you know, knew me, you know, for years in my massage practice and just in general, they literally witnessed me changing from the inside out. Um, and so 
then coming to the summer of uh, 20, 2004, I closed my practice. And all of this came from insights, intuition, trance was something that I was practicing for many years in my mid-20s. Um, and I started going more to realms in in spirit, in um trance in rites of passage, rituals, many medicine circles, and all kinds of things that were literally my, it was my fuel, it was my, um, it was my foundation um, as a shamanic priestess. It was really powerful. And then there was the time that came that literally I was called um, by Ma. Um, Ma is the divine mother, um, the divine feminine, the primordial mothers. There's many different collectives and groups that I walk with and she's come through. But literally it was her calling me and saying, come on, (laughs) it's time. And literally being called into a direct entry apprenticeship with mom mystery, with the mystery, um, yeah, to enter into to what I did not know and to be mentored by that not knowing. So when I closed my practice, sold my house, um, and literally let go of a lot, it was, I would say, a, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful nine-year um, nine year run, especially in the sense of my private practice and things like that. But it was time for me to sojourn in a different way. And at the time, I think even my, my, my healing arts practice, because I began as a therapeutic massage therapist, um, very quickly found my way into um, becoming certified to do prenatal massage. I began, I had the nickname of, of being a womb whisperer. That was something that just came effortlessly. And because I was developing always my my psychic channels my um um, intuition claire's different ways of seeing that was always something that was going on behind the scenes there was a space and time where i began to feel limited by my practice and for the ones that i was seeing that mm, okay here and there it was okay for me to bring through messages maybe from ancestors from people who have crossed over um the stuff that i was doing with with womb work and with my pregnant clients even sometimes for years in the sense of them coming back with other child you know other children i chose what to share and what not to share depending upon each person that i was working with but eventually my calling to to apprentice with Ma Mystery and travel as a priestess and a traditional midwife and ones that I was meant to meet, it was a part of my path. So it was really very easy. And all of that came prior to conceiving my son. So literally, the fact that he came as a unexpected blessing, which is fantastic in the ways um, that it plays because even if you know the dance with Ma Mystery, right in life, what is the saying? Um, make plans and God, Goddess laughs. Um, it's true that there is, um, and for me, the path was he was a part of the journey. That was also what it was for us. But none of it was a path or something that I could conceive of before I walked walked it. Especially, you know, again, that's pretty much on par with what the mystery is. <laughs> um, but I will say <laughs> this year, um, I gave myself the gift. February, I took the entire month of February. I did 13 days um, dark room retreat, um, complete silence and darkness. And that was to honor my my 20 year anniversary as a priestess of Ma. And then my, at the end of February, I turned 444. Or if we just bring it to Earth incarnations, 48 orbits around the sun. Um, 
Yeah. And I really restored. I restored my my energy, my balance. Um, had completed some major assignments, especially because if people know as well, like death is one piece, but there's also certain rights and things that happen as the person's in transition. So that was also something that I had a soul contract and I agreed to do for, um, for my father. And it was powerful. And as a result of that, which again, I've known this for many, many, many years, that this would be something that was, that would be my role with him. Um, but I received huge activations, some changing of the guard as far as some of my, um, some of my guides and ones that I'm working with and huge activations into my own, to my own system, which is fantastic. And then the fact when you're able to literally take space out of time to allow, um, recalibration, to allow your body to adjust to the new frequencies it makes it so effortless. Well, I won't say effortless because there's some work to it, but there is an aspect. I, I know how to enter those spaces and to go into the void. Um, and it's worthwhile because, it, you, you know, you don't fry your system. <laughs> so Feb February is a gift to myself. Um, and I'm super grateful. But then by the time I got to March and I was checking emails and, um, you know, returned to even with my own clients and, and such, I did not get this update out um, then because I literally just focused on, um, yeah, the ones that I was working with. My intention was to, to send it, you know, as quickly as possible. But Sometimes it's just moving at the speed of light, of life. Um, I notice that as I look at my uh, website, um, there's a lot that I have neglected in the sense of my storytelling. And I think this is also probably pretty relevant in in the sense that ever since I even what it doesn't matter what my storefront is and that may sound disrespectful if I say storefront it's not I don't mean it that way but whether it was my massage practice or if I was traveling and you know literally bringing myself and my gifts to people in different villages and communities as well as um, apprenticing and working with different traditional healers and sangomas and learning about different plants and herbs and all kinds of things, um, I find that I always end up busy. <laughs> the ones that are meant to find me always do. Um, I'm grateful at this stage of the game, though, that I don't have a physical brick and mortar building. I love the freedom that I was able to create in transitioning to be able to be online. But my intention, even a few years ago, when I, you know, kind of rested or, you know, retired my traveling priestess hat, was to focus on a sojourner's truth, which is storytelling, which is sharing some of the transmissions and the things that come through. But because I always end up getting really busy um, with clients, it seems then that then my voice or with speaking, sometimes I just don't, I don't feel like it. How I spend my time when I am not working with clients, I play. Um, I did also start my, uh, made a, a commitment to my plant path. Um, so I've begun my journey as an herbalist, an herbalist in training, which some, you know, I mean, what do they say even with um, herbalism? You could be an even some of the most advanced people who've been practicing and, and with, you know, learning with the plants and, and using them as medicine in those ways. Some have been doing it for sometimes 25 years and I've heard them say, I'm still just a beginner. Um, so for me, um, that was also one of the gifts that I was able to incorporate in 2023 in, in the sense of, again, not only cooking and my um, things that I never got a chance to do, to play and cook. I remember that was always the, the case, too. I remember saying, I want to learn to create and cook in the kitchen. 
um, in ways and, and practice my kitchen witchery in ways and with plants and all kinds of things. I do it to a certain degree, but to have the space and time to really develop and create in those ways. Most of the time I would end up with many clients. I remember even in general, there was a time where I was seeing 25 clients a week. Um, and then by the time I came home, I didn't feel like cooking. I didn't have the juice and the creative energy because of how much was going out. Um, now I will say, um, I pretty much only work with six, um, transformation clients at a time. I only have six souls that I work with. So that's like a huge leap. Um, and I am going to be shifting my schedule as of May 23rd. Um, to go down to one day a week for um, uh, live client sessions. One, because of, of traveling and I will be in a different time zone. Two, because it is time for me to make the space for a Sojourner's Truth, which is the podcast. In the beginning, and even I remember when the vision first came in, one of my guides who I've been working with since, since I was little, I remember he came in and, and was like, and he had his staff and just, you know, he came in, shows up how he shows up. And he's handed me the staff, and when I grabbed it, when it came into my hand, it turned into a pencil. And that was always like a clear communication that I was meant to write. Okay, so you're, you're writing. But what I've learned, and this is how we work with spirit, we are co-creating, we are collaborating. So it isn't a, a demand. We are not slaves. We are divine, sovereign, free beings. So in that, I don't like to write. Yeah, that has like the old, every idea, even in general for a book, I have zero interest. And what I will say, um, I mean, all of my work and the things that I get to do, I love, but I will say that I don't do anything that is like obligatory or like I'm just doing it to kind of like check some, something off a list. So for me, A Sojourner's Truth as a book zero interest. That has where is where it has shape shifted into, um, you know, the microphone on my, <laughs> on my, on my iPhone. Um, yeah, no interest. I choose to, to find the most ease, grace and joy in the process of anything that I'm doing. And for me, a sojourner's truth is a part of, um, well, not only my ancestral line, my bloodline um, as, as a storyteller, but it's a part of my creativity. There's a lot of things that I do, even in the sense of um, this was another joy of being able to literally unpack, to go through boxes, all of my books and all kinds of things, even an old computer from, I bought it in when I was in Bali, when my son was a baby. It's an old computer, that old Mac that has to be plugged in, but I have music from so many places all over the globe. Um, so just to be able to like revisit all of those things um, and to use my artistry through tonal alchemy, transmissions, there's meditations and things that I've recorded, all kinds of things that I have to give the space and grace to be able to play in those realms as well. So this is kind of a little announcement as well, that if there are ones that have wanted to get in <laughs> to see me one-on-one, -on -one, um, I recommend calling and, um, or not calling, send me an email um, on, the, on the website and set that up. Um, there's also a gift. There's something new that I'm experimenting with, and I will send that out um, because I'm trying to make more space. I will also be traveling. And my intentions in this, um, in this now moment is to literally find where I am meant to root. It is time for me, as much as I love, love, love Freiburg, I love Germany. The Black Forest was in my backyard for, um, for almost five years. Um, and, but that is, will be a part of my life as in every summer I will be going to Euro Europe. So I'm kind of starting to organize my schedule in a way that, 
um, I'm able to not only see soul family and friends and have those reunions and reunions with my soul family trees, um, but Europe will be in summer. Um, and then I'm also really curious in the sense to see if I am meant to live in the United States. Yeah, it hasn't been a consideration in any, you know, strong, serious way for quite some time. And so there are um, a few places that are flashing on the screen of my consciousness. There are a few places that my um, radar is going to. And because I haven't really considered the United States in so many years as a home base, a lot of the places that I used to travel to um, when I did live in the States and I would facilitate trance dance and different rituals um, and I will be facilitating um, the return of the Sibyls and trance dance and some soul retrievals. Um, but they're only going to be in places that I have a desire to go to or I have soul friends, you know, soul family and friends. Um, but I am curious for some in the collective and who have made their home in the United States. I would love to know what you love about where you live. Yeah. Um, because at this point and because I've traveled and I've lived in so many places, my eye is attuned differently. And then also, again, when I speak of being in this season of my life, there is, there's different things that I require. I spend most of my time at home. I don't, um, and this is why even some of the things that I will be facilitating and um, hosting in, in those ways, on, on maybe once a month, I will travel. Um, within the States, if I'm meant to live in the States, right? Um, Because even that is not a guarantee. I have to really see and feel where I'm called to be home in these in these new moments. And it's exciting. It's exciting in the sense that um, it's not the sojourn um, that I went on prior. Yeah, that was a whole different kind of vision quest um, and way of working in the ways that I was working. Um, and now I just am really specific about what it is that fuels my soul. And so as much as I loved, um, Germany and I love the black forest, it'll, it's a part, it will be a part of my life and continue to be a part of my life in general forever. But the places that I kind of have a, a flashing, um, impulse connection is South, South Carolina, North Carolina, Florida, I'm not really sure. Um, but again, I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not sure. I would love to hear if anyone has um, some insights on places um, that they love to call home. And the, my requirements at this stage is also the fact there has to be um, access to nature. So if you can imagine having the black forest in your backyard, or um, we spent our first few years in uh, Bali and in Indonesia, again, there's so many realms of, of what, like climate and, pl- you know, and people and different, different realities, but it's time for me to bring everything home. It's time for me, I'm not interested, especially the, the fact that I got to begin my apothecary um, in 2023 in the sense of literally buying, um, you know, and, and finding local places where you can get organic herbs and in, in bulk. Yeah. That was always one of my things when I was in Germany. It was like, it was really difficult to find, (laughs) to find things and translation and all kinds of stuff. So again, I'm at a space and place where I'm considering if I am to live in the United States, um, where would that be? So I'm going to take some sojourns. I'm going to, I have a few collaborations that are in the works with some, some tribe that are stateside. Um, and for the ones that want to stay updated on where I will be, um, not only for my physical home base, but also, um, traveling to facilitate trans dance and the return of the Sibyls. Um, make sure that you're subscribed on the website because I'm also condensing 
my email lists and I'm needing to put things in much more efficient and easy packages. And I do not do social media frequently. YouTube, yes, there's things that I upload. I've been a little bit more consistent there. Um, but the podcast is up. and um, But I do not f- get messages on Facebook, um, Instagram, all that stuff. So if you do want to contact me, um, make sure that you contact me through the website. Yeah. What else? I think too, I mean, if I'm just reflecting too on, on the sojourn, I'm pretty 48 years it's like the blink of an eye. And when I think of these next chapters, even in the sense of my path as, as an herbalist and continuing, um, I love the ones that I get to work with. There's, no, there's so many different realms in the way that I work as a womb shaman with people. It's fantastic. I, it, I love it. I love that I get to wake up and I get to do what I love to do. And when I think of my, with, when I think of my father, that was always one of his things from day one. He was always the one who's like, I don't care what you do. Find something that you love and get paid for it and work for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and so pretty much for the pr- most of my career, I have been self-employed or an independent contractor um, and had the, the grace and freedom to, to do my schedule as I choose, to work with who I resonate with. I've not, I've, that has been a part of my path. But I also, there are certain things that we come in with, right, in this in in this world, right? That's why sometimes when I say, okay, well, I'm 48 years old, but I also, in the sense of, um, you know, memory, and when we 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 recall different lifetimes, we we bring it with us. So it is not my first rodeo, and I am by human design um, a manifester, and it's always been to me an art of how you bring things into form and and in any space in any country in any place of what that looks like and how you move with spirit it's inside then outside it's literally becoming a vibrational match to specific things and people and it happens so even without any internet any kind of scenario it happens everywhere. And for me, that's something that I am constantly in awe of. I still, at 48 years old, am like a, like a child. My level of playfulness and enchantment and, you know, the things that you, you, you can't even plan. You literally look at it and you're like, oh, I couldn't have even conceived of that. It ends up being better. So this is where I will say, even as it pertains to traveling um, and for some of the the collaborations and things, um, it has to be, it has to be worth it. It has to be like, it, and it has to feel in alignment. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at at this stage of the game in my life. I literally do not do anything that I don't want to do. Um, and I like it. And I don't apologize in any way, shape, or form because I do got it like that. (laughs) Um, But I am, again, I'm making more space to be able to play in some of my creative realms. And I I remember that 20 years ago when I sold my house um, and I remember the things that I was doing then, freedom movement and meditation. Uh, I always had Mondays off. Mondays are holy for me. That was usually a day that I fast, um, just a normal fast. I do fasting when there's specific rituals or there's certain grid work that I'm, you know, or portal things that I'm, you know, meant to do. But every week, Monday is like a holy day. It's a moon day. Um, and the things that I do, it's like I, I am fueled by how I organize and create my reality. Um, and there is an art to it. I do think our life is art. I think that the way that we express ourselves, I think the way that we 
um, the way that we make our teas, the way that we, I mean, even the creation, playing with, with plants, there's certain times that, I, that certain herbs will say, okay, it's time, I want you to make this, this, this blend um, or this oil or whatever, and it is so much fun, and that's why I really do create my schedule in the way that I do. But I do remember a place when I'm reflecting and looking back and saying, whoa, when I didn't have the space to do that, or when I was traveling, it, it's constant, you have to find, okay, where's the market? Where's this? There's a lot that, that goes into that. And it's not my speed anymore. Now my traveling, especially when it comes to facilitating trance and different things, it's a little bit more as a tourist. It's a little bit more because they're at retreat centers. So again, if I have to leave and I'm not cooking my own food, um, it's having access and being in in places where the retreat centers and and things like that the food is beyond stellar <laughs> and it is nourishing so my requirements have changed and i have to laugh at that because uh my soul brother from another mother uh wilbert um who has left his body he he's one that i used to facilitate with before i took my sojourn um, and I remember being in, you know, it was, ugh, I have been behind the blindfold in trance so many times, but it was one of, one of the trances where I literally, I got done, I took the blindfold off and, um, he and I went, um, to dinner later and I looked, he's like, so how are you doing? Where, where, where are you at? What's going on? And I said, I'm going to sell my house. I'm moving. But I didn't see a moving truck. <laughs> that was the first realization that I was going to take this sojourn. And he's like, he said, he goes, are you going to be a tourist or are you going to be a traveler? And he said it with some salt. Um, and right now he's, he's present. His energy just popped in. But the way that he said it, he said it with some salt because he had intentions that we were going to travel and facilitate, co-facilitate um, trans dance and soul hunting, all the things that we had been doing for years. Um, he was really disappointed that I was literally being called by Ma Mystery and midwives, women that I had been dreaming of, Sangomas, traditional healers, Balians, people that were appearing in my dreams before I actually traveled there and met them. And the same was happening for them. Um, and I said, I'm going on this journey. No, I will be a traveler. But I remember his cheekiness of like, are you going to be a tourist or a traveler? Because um, probably up until that time, I did travel more as a tourist, whether they were retreats or workshops and things like that. Um, I would travel to places just because it was a cool city to go to. Now my interest in cities in that way, not so much. Um, I can enjoy it for a short or a brief amount of time, but I prefer being home. <laughs> So now um, I kind of laugh in that sense that uh, he will be with me in spirit, especially since trance and a lot of the ritual work, it's second nature to him. And again, like I said, spirit is eternal. So even the ones who are no longer present, they come through. And that's also why a sojourner's truth and some of the storytelling and things, I need to go down to one day a week for... Um, for one-on-one -on -one live sessions with people and and just focus on the six clients a month that, you know that I work with um, and then it will give me the space <laughs> it will give me the space to give birth and to create some of the other things that I'm working on because that is fun too but um, I I think I made a little roundabout and digressed a little bit in the sense of um, if I'm reflecting and 20 years ago, because this was the, my 20 year anniversary that just came up. Um, I had my full time practice, probably about 25 to 30 clients a week, massage, body work, cranial sacral therapy, um, you know, that kind of stuff. 
And then on Mondays, I would do freedom movement meditation. There was a class that I would do with women, freedom movement and meditation. And I did it because it was my joy, but it, isn't, it wasn't how I made my money. Do you know what I mean? Like my practice, the work that I do with individual clients has always been how I earned a living, right? Um, and then trans dance. I literally remember as I was selling my house, my house was up for sale. I closed my practice August 31st, 2004. Um, and I traveled to Portland. Um, I facilitated trans dance, flew to Colorado. I made, I flew, I was flying a lot before I was going to be getting on the plane and going to Ghana. Um, and then from there it was Ethiopia and then South Africa and then California and then Bali and then literally decided to stay and birth my son, um, became home part of the village in Panastanan. Um, and I facilitated and did all of the other things. So when I was traveling and sojourning in those ways, it was... Um, I was able to step into the realms that when you're in other places and because I was meeting other people that were like me, other people that were healers and, um, you know, in so many different realms, it was so fantastic to meet myself everywhere. Yeah. And to be able to to go to places where literally there wasn't a preconception. I still I opened an email um, from an old email account that I don't even I didn't even check something said because I looked at some old business cards that I had. I'm like, oh, God is awakening because that's it's old. It was before the soldier. And I was always adamant about working with women and goddess awakening and and, you know, all the things. But then the soldier and happened. It's like the goddess was never sleeping. It was women, <laughs> women in the sense of not being um connected and attuned in different ways or having the space and time to be able to cultivate um, their gifts or to be fearless in coming out of the closet in ways to to say how you see, how you hear, how you receive, how you work with spirit, how you work with your own body, how you work with the elements, how you work with animals and people and you know all the things. But it was so fantastic to be able to work in that way. But I remember opening an old email and there were letters from ones that I had worked with, you know, in different countries, in um, even old clients um, in those ways as well, saying, you did a tarot reading for me and everything that you said, da, 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 I don't even do tarot anymore. <laughs> but at the time, it was something that I was adamant to be able to move around and I only brought my psychic gifts. I only brought those kinds of things, cranial, the shamanic cranial sacral work as well. Um, bringing through messages from, from ones who have crossed over or children, um, just all kinds of things. That's how I moved. That's how my frequency. And so I got this, this, um, apprenticeship and initiation from ones that I couldn't possibly know. Whereas sometimes when you're working with people over and over, you kind of, there's certain aspects that you do get to know. So the fantastic part about going blind and being mentored by Ma Mystery and the unknown, there's a certain level of rest and deeply rootedness that you that you gain from that experience. I don't believe that everybody is called to sojourn in that way. Not everybody is going to travel and go to places like that pregnant and 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 literally trust to such a degree <laughs> that um you know, cuz I don't think it I don't think that's necessary. But for me, it was part of my path and it was part of my calling. And for any of the clients that think um, I left and closed my practice because I got pregnant, um, it's not true because the dates absolutely prove that um, six months prior, <laughs> this was my initiation and um, literally a sacred ceremony and commitment to walk the path of a priestess and the goddess of Ma. And it was before my son was even in my awareness. Yeah. Now, after the fact, and because I do work with so many ones who have um, children that are coming through in different ways. Yeah. From 
um, yeah, from beyond different forms, adoption, um, you know, all kinds of things. Now it's pretty normal, but I had my own initiations with all of it. And I don't know, I, I'm pretty, I, I like my life. <laughs> I like this lifetime and I can't say that even 20 years ago that I could have ever even possibly guessed it would look how it looks and my ability. I mean, there's a lot of initiations and a lot of different ones that I've walked with in and had different tests and things that I've had to to um, to master, you know, that's also a part of it. Nobody gets out of their 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 soul contracts and things in those ways. But what I have learned is that when you choose to meet them and when you do have under your belt this knowing of without like any backup or protection or whatever other than just your own alignment as the tree of life that you are, your own connection with your um, your God self, um, that you can't fail, you can't fall, you can't really... Um, and even if I think about it too, there's a lot of things that I feared would happen or different dynamics, different initiations that I had to walk through. And those things did happen. But you see what you're made of in the sense of like, oh, I thought that would be really horrible. And then you realize you're like, mm, that didn't even touch me. Like <laughs> you're, there's, a, there's, a level of, there's a level of confidence that comes um, because of knowing that you are covered in, in all directions. You know, you are protected beyond what you can possibly fathom. And if you have an understanding and you also know that spirit is eternal, you're also not afraid of death. I think that's also something that for the most part, when I see people who are really caught up in different ways, there's a deep distrust for life. They also use their mind in a way that they try to micromanage instead of just stepping back, leaning their energy back and saying, show me. Yeah, there's a lot aspect of humility that comes in um, that goes, okay, I, I, I do not know. I cannot see the path. Show me. And then you learn what your cues are and how to listen and all the things, you know, all the things. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm flipping on the, on the website again here. And I, I think part of my expression as well um, with some of the art, some of the poems and things that, that have been important to me, I've, and art and photos, um, yeah, it's important. And this is where, too, I have neglected, <laughs> I have neglected this website. And I also have, um, I am going to give myself a, a little landmark, too, by May 23rd. So that's when I will be going down to one day a week um, with clients. And so regardless, if there's, if it's a reality then where there's months of having to wait, um, that's what it is too. I'm not an on-call midwife and I don't really work with ones who are in emergency scenarios. Um, yeah, I'd work with ones who are emerging and seeing what's coming out through their being and through their transitions, but I'm not an on-call. I actually spend a significant amount of time offline, off-grid in many ways. Um, my phone is most often on airplane mode, so I'm not <laughs> interrupted whether I'm doing specific channelings for clients or working with spirit in those ways. And it allows me the freedom. It allows me to not be governed by clocks and time. Um, and that was always one of my wishes. That was always, I think I'm going to add the update that I recorded a couple of years ago because it still applies. I don't really want to repeat myself. Um, and I know that that was also me kind of speaking a little bit more about some of those contrasts and where I was at in my life then. And I still say it all applies, but now there's some more phases that are coming in and I'm being called to do a little bit more in the sense of facilitation 
group work. And I'm going to have some beautiful reunions with soul family and friends that are stateside that I have not hugged in quite some time. Um, and I will also be headed to Europe. And um, yeah, and I have... Um, so this was, I kind of got a little distracted there. So May 23rd, there's some souls that do not have their own websites, um, but are amazing. And so this is also part of, um, even when I look at my website, there's things that um, if you follow, I'm going to read this just from here. Um, my life is my embodied artistry. I'm a priestess of Ma, a womb whisperer, pre- and postnatal massage therapist, life, death, and rebirth doula, cranial sacral practitioner, Reiki master teacher, world schooling mama. Most of these, most days I spend at home being all that I am, which is absolutely true. I love that I don't have to pick one thing. You know, even in the realm of clients, of how and the people that I see, I love the diversity of it. There's so many different realms, and I love that I don't have to choose. I serve my global community as a womb shaman, trans dance facilitator, with major focus on supporting families, star kids, star seeds, and new grid kids. My word is my wand. I'm an inspiration instigator. I'm a divine love dealer of womb wisdom and sacred soul signature transmissions. If you happen to be a lover of wordplay, beauty, and truth, slow your roll and scroll through for a bird's eye view into the weaving of our unique threads of life. Remember to follow the little white rabbit and click on the links to the podcast, blog, and global community offerings from our big, beautiful soul family. So that's like a key piece that I really... Sometimes I receive emails from people and they're not really following the little white rabbit. If there's a transmission or there's something that I've uploaded, if you click on the links and you go to the description, you will see if there's a specific author or even words in those ways, check it out. It may lead you down a path where then that is the gift. That is the offering that's coming to you. Sometimes they are, you're not meant to. To see me personally, the transmission in itself is enough. Um, and um, I was meaning to say too, as I say, like there are ones who are not online and don't have uh, websites, but they are amazing and they have books, they have um, art shows, they have, that's also again, one of my passions, as much as I'm one that I can literally throw on a backpack and be and be okay um and and move in those ways I've reached the stage where I like my home I love decorating I love my art and I want all of I also don't like traveling with some of my sacred items and tools I do not like anybody touching them (laughs) and at the same time you don't need tools and items in those ways right I've lived in that realm as well I don't travel with all the things but I have come to a space and place where I do like to be home. And eventually, for those that have asked, am I doing massage? Am I, you know, this is again where I'm kind of speaking to um, the collective in ways. For the ones that have asked, cranial sacral therapy um, truly is, and some of the shamanic sessions and shakti pots those are the things that i do but massage i still receive it even the day that my dad died he left his body on january 17th um 2023 um within four hours i was on the table receiving a massage in my in in the house um so i receive body work i will always value it but for me physically Um, I don't have the desire to do hands-on body work anymore other than cranial sacral. But when I do find where I am meant to root, um, I do envision that I could see myself on occasion if there are ones that I am meant to work with, um, they can come to me. Yeah, they can come to the house or even as I travel, that happens as well. And I do have a table um, that is in that is in Germany, but there's some other things that are in the works. There are some other things, some underground forest retreats and different things. So I am being called um, to work a little bit more in in some group facilitation and some co-collaborations with some beautiful souls. So 
<sighs> I think that's about all that I want to say for this update. Where are we at? Oh, about an hour, huh? Well, that's all I got to say about that. I will make a short um a short little gift cuz I do have a oh, no, I'm not done yet. My son and I joke about this all the time cuz we um, both our fifth chakras and our level of communication is super stella, super stella and can go on and on about many, many things. Um, but the fact that I said that I was done and then no, actually not. At one point, I remember this is part of the reflections and it, it does apply because um, A Blessing Rain Foundation, I am the founder of A Blessing Rain Foundation. That has been the vision helping women and children build bridges to wholeness and prosperity. That has been um, gestating and birthed, actually, in the sense of every person and every country, every place that I've been, A, Bless A Blessing Rain Foundation, because of who I am, because of my embodiment, it came through when Blessing was born. It was part of the vision. But I realized for myself when I was assessing, it's like, well, what do you want to do? How do you want to spend your time? One, when I said I had zero interest in writing a physical hard copy of a book, that switched into a podcast. Well, A Blessing Rain Foundation is something that uh, as far as actually making the at a, a literal foundation and going through all of those ropes, I have no desire. But I will say I do have um, and I have an account that is set up. I have um, and I'm going to make a little short, a short little thing and uh, do some some gift offerings. Um, there is one. Um, uh, valued at $1,111.11, uh, which is a, a monthly uh, direct access, Trinity Roots Transformations. Or I could turn that into five, uh, four, individual, four individual sessions. Am I doing my math right? Um, but that exists. I've already been paid for it. So for ones that have not been able to afford, if it's been an issue as far as um, money and different things, uh, there is a gift and that is um, connected to a blessing rain. Um, so anyone who, who does want to receive that, um, make sure that you send me a message through the, the, the website and make sure that you put in the heading or at the top, A Blessing Rain. And then I will know that that is um, as a gift. There's also something that I'm experimenting with. I'm going to offer group sessions for um, a group Shakti Pot that's unfolding and I want to give it the space to see what's meant to unfold. Um, and I will commit to once a month on the new moon. And the first one in May, uh, for May, May 7th, I'm going to offer to the collective on a donation basis, just because I haven't decided if I'm going to commit to it yet. So again, for ones that want to work um, and to receive from me, and yet maybe some of my other offerings as far as price point, if that's not a fit, there's some gifts that come through as a blessing rain. Yeah, um, that's just is what it is. And it's fun. I live it. This is also what I think, too, when I look at even if I've written or if I've read and I bring through a transmission, um, there are things that I take seriously to the point that I've embodied it. That's been a part of my practice. Even if there's a piece that I didn't write, like the my part of my vows for um my priestess initiation 20 years ago came from uh, Patricia Lynn Riley, Imagine a Woman in Love with Herself. And I've recorded that as a transmission. But I remember at the time, I remember saying, I want to be that woman. And I literally, every year when I renewed my vows, I, look, I would read and I, could, I, I literally embody it. I am that woman. There is no longer. So for me, there's something about artists who put their work into the world or they write something and they bring through a poem and then how you bring it into life by your own embodiment. I love it. I live for that stuff. Um, yeah, I absolutely live for that. Um, 
And there's so much. There's so much. And this is why I think, too, there's so much that I'm interested in the sense of creative arts and also sharing some of my artists. I have so many friends that are uh, musicians and artists in their own right in so many different forms. So it was also um, I'm making it a point to set up a global community page as well where you get to see some of their art shows and some of their different offerings and if anyone is listening to this and we are connected in that way and you want and you don't have a website and you want it on uh, the global community page make sure you reach out again only through the website I don't check the social media comments and um, and you know DMs that's just not my thing I did it yeah so I think that's it that is really truly it and I am going to put I'm still gonna attach I believe that I'm going to attach the the uh, update from a couple years ago because that speaks a little bit more to some of the things going on <laughs> as well because it's still true I'm really guarded um, I don't know if guarded is the right word, but I really am the reason I love my life and I love this season that I'm in is because I am very clear about how I choose to spend my time and with whom. So that's also another aspect. I walk with ones with in many different realities, many different scenarios of, you know, in different realms, right? Sometimes it is intense. Sometimes they are going through different things. My personal time, how I spend my time when I am not working with clients, um, there is just a lot of play. I watch a lot of like stand up comedy and things where I am just laughing. Um, my freedom of movement, like when I'm not, when I, you know, I have this, the, where I see clients and then the times that I'm not working, it is literally in flow motion and I have a lot of space and time which allows my child self to just bask and play and um and be continually open to the mystery yeah that also fuels my creativity so anyways that is truly all I have to say about that <laughs> peace peace and more peace